Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going over financial maths and the topic of interest and depreciation. I'll be going through the theory and Jeremy will be working on the examples on yeah. the whiteboard. So here. We don't really have any answers to these questions, so let's just hope that Jeremy can get them right. Oh and also, God. as always, don't rely solely on our videos because we might just have missed something or explain something weirdly. So you should do your own revision before an exam as well. Yeah, we're actually very untrustworthy. So I wouldn't back us to get things right at all. Okay, so to start, I'm just going to go through, um, go through some definitions. Uh, they're quite simple and you probably would have heard them last year as well. So firstly, is salary and that's just uh, money that you, like it's paid annually. Uh, next is wage and that's paid hourly. Overtime payment, so this is when you're working like over your normal amount of hours per week and it's generally seen as a good thing by, employment, uh, by employers. So because of that, you normally get paid like time and a half or double time. Um, next is commission, and that's where you're paid a percentage of the goods sold. And you're normally also paid a weekly or annually retainer so that you have some pay if you don't make any sales. Uh, and finally, there is the holiday pay slash loading. So this is your normal pay plus holiday loading, which is normally 17.5%. Uh, so the first topic we're going to talk about is income tax. So income tax is taxed based on your taxable income. Uh, so your taxable income is the amount of money you earn in the year uh, and then you can deduct work-related expenses uh, to lower your taxable income such as char charitable donations uh, to better the day tutors or work expenses. Um, in a test you'll get a tax table which will show you the different classes of income uh, and then the tax you'll have to pay on that and like how you figure out how much tax you need to pay. Uh, in these questions they will likely have more than one part. So for example, part A find Jeremy's taxable income if he earns 55987 per year. Oh, jeez. 55987 per year. Uh, so Jeremy's fives look incredibly like S's, yeah. so if you see an S, just assume it's a five. Well, unless um, I actually want an S. Then, then just don't use an S, use another letter. Oh, sorry. All right. Okay, uh, Jeremy also has $673 in work-related expenses. Okay. 673 That's jeez. right. And because he's so generous, he donates a singular dollar to charity each year. That's lovely. That's very nice of me. So again, here you're finding Jeremy's taxable income. Right. Okay, so my taxable income here. Basically, how we do taxable income uh, is your taxable income... Look at this great writing. Not that you can even see, because I'm blocking it at the moment. But your taxable income uh, equals to your income minus... So I'll just say I minus uh, any deductions, which is going to be D. So deductions here are work expenses and my $1 to charity. So here we're going to have $55,987 minus, uh, what have we got there, 673 uh, and then also minus 1. It's good that you can write on a very straight axis. Yes, I know. I love writing in that nice diagonal line. I also think someone commented on how bad your handwriting was. Did they? So yeah, they probably did. Yeah. Well, they definitely did. Um, yes. so, so again, our taxable income is our income minus any deductions. So here I've got deductions of $674, because that's the 673 and then the one, uh, and then we've got that initial income of 55987 So this is going to require me to do some excellent maths on the spot, uh, but we're going to end up there with $55,313 uh, in taxable income. Again, just note that these answers could be completely wrong, as we don't have the answers to them. So part B of the question would be something along the lines of using the tax table, find how much tax Jeremy should pay. As I read it, I realised Jeremy doesn't have a tax table, so I'd be Don't incredibly worry, impressed. I'd be very actually... impressed if he didn't get the answer right, but let's give him a crack. <laughs> just don't trust his answer. The and, yeah. uh, let's just pretend that I've memorised the tax table. So that number that I had from before was $55,313. Uh, so the tax table there, if I get it wrong, I'm just going to make it up. Uh, but basically what we've got to do, the table for this bracket, I think this is the uh, between 37000 and 80000 um, so what that one is, is our tax, our tax table will say 3572 plus, oh, that's a good question, is plus, it, I think 0. Point, is it 0. 0.37? 0. 0.37, I actually think that might be wrong, but anyway. Well, no, I, actually I, it is wrong, it is wrong, it is wrong. So I think it's 3527, sorry, 3572 plus 0. 0.325 um, uh, for every dollar, for every dollar, um, dollar over, uh, I'm just going to use the old one here, we'll say for every dollar over um, 18,200. Uh, so what we do there is we go 3572, that's our initial amount, 3572, that's, wow, that's shocking writing. I haven't even written the right numbers there. But yeah, we go 3572, and so this plus uh, 0 0.325 for every dollar over 18,200. Basically what that is, 
that is um, cents per uh, per dollar. So that's how much how many cents you need to pay per dollar over that eighteen thousand two hundred. So how we plug that into a calculator if you don't want to work it out yourself is you go three point uh, three five seven two plus zero point three two five bracket eighteen uh, sorry bracket fifty five. 313 so minus 18200. Yes, yes, X13. Um, so once again, I'm not going to be able to do that, but basically if you plug that into your calculator, that'll be your answer, and that will be the tax payable. So when it'll ask you about the tax payable, that's that. That's how much tax should be paid based on the income and the deductions. Um, so yeah, uh, you don't need to memorise a tax table because you'll be given one in a test, so you don't have to try and make it up on the spot like Jeremy did. Yeah. Um, so the next oh, so that, that tax table is definitely wrong. Yeah. So the answer yeah. is also wrong. Yeah, great. So the next topic is PAYG uh, or pay as you go. And this is a uh, form of tax which is deducted from your pay throughout the year. Uh, it's the same concept as the income tax question before. You'll be given a table and you need to find where their pay fits in and finish the question. Uh, the only difference is it may ask you to find if they've paid enough tax for the year or if they've overpaid. So to do that, uh, you'll find the amount of tax needed in the pay-as-you-go tax table and then the normal tax table for the yearly taxable income. If the pay-as-you-go tax is less than the yearly taxable income, you need to pay more, and if it's over, the tax office will give you some money back. It's lovely of them, isn't it? It is. There's no example, so you can sit back down. Um, the next topic is simple interest. So when you, have a, when you have money in an account or make an investment, you gain interest on that money. So you can also be charged interest on outstanding loans, such as house loans. Uh, or a mortgage, uh, simple interest is charged on the original amount. So the formula is quite simple, it's I equals PRN, and you've probably seen this in uh, previous years. Uh, so in that formula, I equals interest, uh, so that's what you're trying to find, P equals the principal amount of money, R equals the interest rate, and N is the number of time periods. So once Jeremy finishes writing that, I'll give him his first example. Oh, that's really nice of you, Luke. You're welcome. Uh, so just to explain, uh, so that one's number of number of time. Um, sure. Jeez. All right. So here we go. Um, so yeah. So we've got that formula. I've got my whiteboard marker before. It's very Your whiteboard cool. marker. Yes, it's mine. Um, so we've got this formula up here. Basically, this formula is applicable for any simple interest. Uh, and when Luke gives me my example in several seconds, I will explain how to use it better in terms of an actual question. Oh, and just a uh, quick thing. Um, the principal amount refers to the original amount, uh, amount that's used. All right, so hopefully this doesn't have any fives in it, otherwise it's gonna look like pieces. <laughs> there actually are fives there in it. There are fives, So news. I'm getting excited. So again, first example, and yeah. only example for this one, is right. Jeremy invests $4,000 for six years at a rate of 3.5% per annum. Oh, that's a five. Uh, 4,000 for three years. That's right, uh, six years. That's six, six years, okay. Please so, watch that back and tell me if you said six. Uh, at a rate of 3.5% oh, right. interest rate per annum. Of so that per annum means yearly, so sometimes you might get questions where it's per month, and I'll explain that in a bit more depth after Jeremy per finishes annum. There we go, look at that beautiful five. So as we can see, what we've got to do here, we're looking for the I, so we're going to write out the formula, we're going to do I equals P R N. There's our formula, so I is what we're looking for, so we're going to keep it with the I at the front. The P is 4,000, that's the principal amount, times by 3.5% times by six, because the interest rate is the same, so we've got, six, we've got years and per annum, which is again is years. Uh, so we've got this beautiful thing here. Once again, I can not do that, so it's gonna be uh, 24,000, 24,000 uh, times by 0 0.035, because that's 3.5% is the decimal. Unfortunately, I cannot do that, um, but you know, I'm sure you could try if you wanted to. Uh, but yes, so that will give us the interest. Um, so what's important to note there is that that will only give us the interest. If it wants to know the total value of the investment after X number of years, you'd have to add on that interest back to the original amount. It's wonderful that Jeremy's like making this up on the spot and he's just like taking chunks out of the script that I've yeah. written. Yeah. So that's really helpful. And, and because of that, I'm going to give him another example with a five in it. So that example is going to be when the time period is, for example, months or something from the time period and the rate doesn't match. So it's not in the same right. unit. Really so, nice. uh, so, so in the example before, the interest rate was per annum and it was at six years. So they match. But in the example I'm about to give Jeremy, uh, he's going to invest $5,000 at a 10% interest rate. But the investment is going to be there for 18 months. Right. So uh, Luke has made the dumb mistake 
of uh, giving me something that I could very easily change into years. But basically, whenever you've got something like this, actually, I'm going to change this example because it's just so stupid. So I'm going to make it 34 months, sure. Uh, I'm Quite insulting. Yeah. It was simple for a reason, as my uh, script would sorry, say, but sorry. you've sort of taken it Okay. Out. I'm going to change it into 34 months because that's something that's a lot harder to sort of like convert. Um, but basically, what you want to do um, is uh, when we've got this, we've got the two things here. We've got per annum and 34 uh, months right there. So the thing is, those two things don't match. Years and months do not match. Um, and so you can either change the years into months or the months into years, but it's just easier. Normally, I find to change the months into years. So why that one right, uh, before was easy? was because we know that 18 months is just one and a half years. Is it? You can just change it to, yeah, you can just change it to one and a half years. But instead here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say 5,000, 5,000 times, and because we're now changing this, um, we're gonna be changing the, sorry, I got that wrong before. We're actually gonna be changing the years uh, in the interest rate into months. So because we need to change, um, and you, you laughing. It's not very nice. I didn't actually laugh at okay. all. Right. So, just... because we want to change this per annum into an X number of months, we just need to divide it by 12. So, what we're then going to do is we're going to go 10 divided by 12, um, and then that's all going to be percent there. Jeez, that's interesting. Um, and then times 34. Because to get 10% per annum into monthly, we're going to have to divide it by 12. So, uh, that will again give you some sort of answer, which I'm not going to be able to do now, but sure, it's good enough. You done? Yes. Okay, good. I only fell asleep. So the next topic is compound interest, which is something which is probably new if you're in year 10. So compound interest is where the interest is charged on the current balance, uh, not the original amount. Uh, so the formula for this is A equals P bracket 1 plus R bracket, and that is uh, that, the brackets there are to the power of N. I think Jeremy will write it up, so... Uh, no, Jeremy will not write it up. No, Jeremy's speaking the third else. person. I'm just writing something else. Um, so there, P again equals the original principal. Uh, a equals the final amount, which you're yeah. trying to find. Right. Uh, 1 is equal to 1. Oh, nice. Um, and R equals rate, and then N is the number of time periods again. So the only new uh, variable there is the A. No, that's actually not true. The new things here is that we've got the 1, and that the N is now oh, 2. I didn't say the new things. I said the new variable. No, right. So again, I'm going to give no. Jeremy another example with multiple fives in it. Thank you. So Jeremy invests 2,500. Ah at 4.6% per annum nice. for five years. Okay, P, A, 4. And then we want you to find the five interest years. earned. Find the interest earned or do you want me to find the total amount of the investment? No, no, find the interest earned because that's what I asked. Thank you. So if All I right. wanted you to find the total, I'd probably ask you to find the total. <laughs> okay, it's very kind of you, Luke. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're going to go um, 25, well, A is going to be equal to 2,500. Uh, times 1 plus 0 0.046 because that's that interest rate uh, for five years. Again, because years matches there. And you forgot the top there. of the five. What did I forget? The top of the five. The top of oh, sorry. It's just an X. Right. There we go. Um, so the issue here and why I'm a bit annoyed at Luke is because I'm actually not going to be able to find this answer uh, now uh, for what he actually wanted me. And a lot of these, they're just going to need to go into calculators, so I'm not going to go solve it. But that's what you chuck in the calculator. Is there a but simpler he, example I could have given you? No. But, <laughs> to um, the power of one year. Yeah, great. Um, but the issue here uh, that we had before is because we want to find just the interest earned as opposed to the total value of the investment, we then have to get rid of the 2,500. So what that's going to give us is 2,500 plus any interest. So if we just want the interest, we're going to have to go 2,500 now I'm just going to put this in brackets, you wouldn't need to, but I'm just going to do it to make it easier. Just the one bracket. 1 plus 0 0.046, this is just what I wrote before, and then we're going to bracket that, and then we're going to go minus 2,500. Because so we're going to subtract the principal amount in order to give us just purely the interest. And so that is how you would solve that question, that's what you put in your calculator. Thank you, uh, and yeah. Thank I'm genuinely that. concerned that Jeremy can't write in a straight line across the board. It's quite difficult. <laughs> sure. Okay, um, and yeah, Jeremy pointed out uh, you have to be aware of the question, what it's asking, if it wants you to find the total amount or just the interest to the original amount. So the next topic, the second last, it's quite simple, it's term payments. So term payments are where you buy something expensive and pay it off over a period of time. So uh, you would have to pay a deposit and then figure out the monthly instalments or something along those lines. It's quite simple, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'll give Jamie the chance to give you a lecture about it. So I'll just move on to the final topic, which is depreciation. 
So depreciation is the decrease in value of an object over time. This can be for reasons such as age of the item or the damage it has. The formula for depreciation is similar to compound interest, except you do one minus R instead of one plus R. So the formula is A equals P bracket one minus R to the power of N. So for example, Jeremy has a computer worth 3,500 and it depreciates at 15% per annum. What is the value in five years? Wow, that's a great question. I actually didn't have all those fives in the script, but uh, seeing how much you struggled with it throughout the video, I've decided to add them in. Oh, so you're just so cool. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. So, uh, as I've explained, um, and also, you know, I'll do some bullying back. Uh, just to point out, I'm, the, I'm doing the examples in this one because Luke physically cannot actually work out any of these uh, questions. Sorry, how much working stuff. out have you done? You've just left the, you've done one line and just put some numbers in there. That's a good point. Um, Alright, so I've come down low here. I don't know what this looks like, but anyway. Uh, so what we're going to do, A is equal to 3,500 uh, times by 1 minus 0 0.15 uh, to the power of 5. So as Luke just somewhat correctly uh, pointed out, I cannot solve that now, but yeah. So that's what, what is that to the power of? That's the power of uh, S. S. Oh no, 5. Sorry, 5. Yeah, 5. Um, Alright, so yeah, so that's what you do there. You plug that into your calculator. That will give you the, price of, uh, the value of the item after the set number of years. So yeah, it's similar to compound interest, you just have to remember that depreciation is 1 minus R and compound interest is 1 plus R. Yeah, good stuff. So that's all on interest and depreciation. Hopefully you've learned something or had a laugh at Jeremy. Yeah. And also there'll be some more videos throughout the next week, so keep an eye out for them. Thank you.